Hola chicos, buenos días. Espero que todos estén bien. I hope you're all doing great today. I do want to apologize for missing class today, but like I mentioned, my son is very ill and he's still very ill. Um, hopefully he gets better today and tomorrow um, and then we can resume our class on Thursday. However, I didn't want to miss this opportunity uh, to go over the content that we were supposed to go over in class today, which was part of your assignment that I canceled last week, uh, assignment 6B, if you recall, was about conjugating the verbs. And so I want to go over here uh, really quickly on how to do that. That way you can begin that assignment and then you don't have to worry about it um, for the rest of the week. But we will continue with the conjugation of the verbs. So it's really important that you take notes, um, especially for AR verbs. How is it that we conjugate it and how, we, how it changes? Um, that way when we go over them in chapter three, because that's gonna be our focus in chapter three, you uh, get the hang of it. Um, and then on Thursday, we can resume with our power, uh, PowerPoint presentation. So you still have to turn those in. Um, if you haven't sent them to me, send them to me before Thursday um, or turn them in into the Canva assignment. Awards. I think that's locked. So just send them to me, actually. Um, and we'll do that on Thursday, first thing. Hopefully it'll go really fast. And then... We can continue with our topic for Thursday, which is the verb estar. So don't miss on Thursday. It's going to be a little bit heavy on Thursday, but it'll be fine. So let's get started with our, um, oh, why can I share? Oh, there it is. With our presentation. So this is what I had ready for you all today. And so again, oh, I did want to go over the date. So like always, it's going to be like if we were in class, this is going to be recorded, but this is what we do. We usually do. We write the dates, right? Escribimos la fecha del día. So go ahead and write that in your notebooks. Um, write la fecha, see? The date for today. And so remember, we have three phrases that we write, right? When we talk about the date. So write those three. And today actually adding two more phrases. And so I'm going to see who watched this video on Thursday, because on Thursday, when we actually write the date on the whiteboard, I'm going to ask for these two extra phrases that we're going to learn today. Entonces, escribe la fecha de hoy, right? Today's date, right? You should know this by now. Son tres frases. Hoy es, ayer fue, y mañana será. Those are three phrases. And so take a little minute here. I'll time you. Let's get, give you 30 seconds. Wait a minute, seconds. La fecha de hoy. So remember, the day goes first. El día va primero. Después el mes. Y por último, uh, el año. Okay. Pero vamos a escribir los días de la semana. También. Okay. So hopefully you have. Hoy es. And I don't have it here. But let me just share whiteboard I'm not going okay so you should have hoy es que es hoy hoy es martes 20 hoy oh. you should have hoy es martes de febrero del 2024. Sí. Después, ayer fue, sí, ayer fue de febrero del 2024. Y mañana será. 
feliz de So remember that when we have 21, right, 21, 21, I mean, we're just saying the, the fecha in this case will be right, 21. But when we're talking about how many there are, how much is it, um, if we say 21 dollars, right, then we take away that O and we stay with 21, right? Um, that goes with, I have 21 kids, then go 21 hijos, right? No 21 hijos. But in this case, we're talking about la fecha, so that's fine. The other two phrases that we are going to be adding is or are anteayer y pasado mañana. Okay, so anteayer, what do you think that is? I think about it for a little bit. Anteayer. It has the word ayer in it. And we know what fue means, right? Was. And so that kind of gives us a hint too. Anteayer fue. So that this means it needs to be in the past. So we know ayer fue lunes 19 de febrero. Y anteayer fue domingo 18 de febrero. So anteayer means two days ago. See? Anteayer. Ayer, anteayer. Right? And so pasado mañana será. Even though pasado means past, right? Pasado mañana together. Right? Um, means two days from now. So, pasado mañana será. And so, será is our hint because será is the verb will be um, right in the future. Entonces, pasado mañana será. Okay. Hoy es martes 20. Mañana será miércoles 21. Y pasado mañana será. Jueves 22 de febrero. So, anteayer, two days ago. Pasada mañana, two days from now. Vale? And so, on Thursday, when we write our fecha, right, you're going to write these five phrases. So, you already have three of them. Hoy es, ayer fue, y mañana será. Now we're going to add anteayer fue. Uh, vamos a ver, lunes. Uh, domingo. 18 de febrero de 2024. Y pasado mañana será. Okay. So, el jueves, when I ask for the date, cuando les diga escriban la fecha, you're going to have these five written down. Okay, ante ayer. Y pasado mañana. Ok. Entonces vamos a regresar a nuestro tema. Uh, el refrán. El refrán de esta semana es no todo lo que brilla es oro. Not everything that shines is gold. Ok. Basically, don't judge a book by its cover. Right? We don't know what's behind it. Uh, in this case, we have a little image of the carrot. Right. Um, this one looks like it's going to be a huge carrot because it has all these green leaves. It's it's a big on the outside, but on the inside, look, it's a small carrot. On the other hand, we have the leaves. Right. Um, I don't know if there's a specific name, but it looks like it's lacking a little bit. Doesn't look as appetizing. Right. It's not shining like this other one. And look at the 
the, the carrot here. It's huge, it's humongous, okay? So no todo lo que brilla is oro. That goes with anything. Y bueno, you're supposed to do todo sobre mí, la presentación. Is that an M? Did I put an M? Oh. Uh, la presentación todo sobre mí y mi amigo, mi mejor amigo, mi hermano, mi hermana, right? Another person that you uh, you're supposed to choose someone else to also just tell us about them, their birthday, and what they liked. And so in esta presentación, we, uh, last week, we used the verb gustar with the infinitive, right? And that is what you used on your presentation, which we'll still do on Thursday. So please make sure you come ready to present it. But we focused a lot on using the verb gustar plus the infinitive. And so you might be thinking, well, what is the infinitive? And I mentioned it in class a couple of times. Um, and if you remember, the infinitive is the simplest form of a verb, right? So that means it either it ends in AR, ER, and IR. Um, but then we also use the pronouns, me, te, le, les, nos, right? And so we know that gustar, the verb gustar, uh, means to like or something something that you do is pleasing to you or to someone else. Um, and so when we pair gustar, right, we say, we have to say, me gusta, te gusta. Um, if we're using le gusta, we have to say who, like uh, what's pleasing to who, right? A Gustavo le gusta, right? Gustavo likes or Something is pleasing to Gustavo, right? Les gusta a los estudiantes, les gusta estudiar, right? The students like to study. Nos gusta, right, for we, for us, nos gusta hacer ejercicios. We like to uh, exercise, right? And so we know these pronouns. Me is for yo, right? When you say that, I like something, me gusta. Te is for tú. Te gusta, right? A ti te gusta. Le is for the third person. Le gusta. Él, ella, o usted. Uh, nos gusta, right? We like. Y les gusta, they like. And so we we know about that. And like I mentioned, you are included in, in your presentations, what you like and what the other person liked. And so when we're using the verb gustar, we use me gusta correr, right? Me gusta acampar. Me gusta ir de compras. And so we're using gustar, right? We're using the verb gustar. And the infinitive is the activities, right? The verbs. So these are the verbs. So see how correr ends in ER, right? Acampar ends in AR, right? So we have the last two letters. E-R, A-R, right? E-R, A-R. Donde está I-R? This one's not an IR because this is its own verb. It's a, it's to go. Um, but I think you have one now on in your packet, in your in your vocabulary packet. Uh, the verb salir, like to go out. Salir a bailar, to go dancing. Um, that is an IR verb. Okay, but all of these activities, all of these verbs are in its infinitive. Form. Okay. They are all in its infinitive form, which is the simplest form of a verb. Okay. And so we have here, like this uh, third ejemplo, a los padres de Sandra les gusta bailar, right? A los padres. So it's telling uh, who, our subject, les gusta bailar. Right, so we have the pronoun, les gusta, and then the verb gustar. And then bailar would be our infinitive verb. So see how it's gustar plus the infinitive, right? Because we don't change the this verb. However, if we want to say, um, instead of saying a ellos les gusta, right? They like, what if we just want to say they they dance, right? So they like to dance, but they dance. So there's a difference there. Um, if you go to page 55 of your textbook, you're going to see a couple of examples there that we're going to work on today. 
um, because we're going to uh, we're going to practice changing them. And so this is what I mean by changing them. So the first one you see is a Sebastián le gusta ver videos en línea. What does that mean? He likes to see or he likes to watch online videos, right? But we're using the verb gustar plus the infinitive, right? That's what we've been practicing. A Sebastián le gusta ver videos en línea. So a in le gusta is part of the the use of gustar. The infinitive, the verb here, is ver, right? To see. And so if we take away a and le gusta, right? Uh, to So we can say Sebastian sees videos online, like or on, online videos, right? He watches online videos. We take away a in le gusta, but now our verb, we have to change it, right? That we have to change the verb. We have to conjugate it. And so I remember telling you all about the lamp. Remember that? How the infinitive form of a verb, it's like a lamp that's not plugged in. If you don't plug in that lamp, it doesn't turn on, right? Um, so it states it's just, it's on a regular form. It's not giving you light. It's just kind of there. It just exists. That's what an infinitive verb is. Now, when we change it, that is when we plug it in and we plug in those new endings. So when we conjugate a verb, we usually drop the endings, the ER in this case, and we add the new ending, okay? Um, and so, Sebastián ve videos en línea. So now see how here I'm not saying a Sebastián le gusta. I'm not saying a Sebastián likes to watch videos online, right? Now, Sebastián ve videos en línea. That's just a statement that he does see online videos or he does watch online videos, right? And so the verb to see, right, ver, it's an ER verb. And in this case, uh, we drop the R, okay? We keep the V, the V, and the E. And so when we plug in, right, this is what, we're, what I mean. We plug in the new endings. So, oh, right, e, like, oh, E, S, E. Uh, for yo, es yo veo, tú ves, él ve, ella ve, usted ve, nosotros vemos, vosotros veis, ellos, ellas, ustedes ven. Okay? So, the new endings would be for the uh, form yo, would be e o, for tú, would be a S um, for él, ella, usted, the third person, right, is just the E. For nosotros, the new ending will be hemos. Vosotros veis, ellos, ellas, ustedes ven. Okay. Um, so those are the new endings. So see how we don't see the E -er anymore. We don't see the E R anymore. Is E O. So each form changes its new ending. And so that is what we plug in when we uh, are trying to conjugate the verb. So in order to know which which uh, which ending we're plugging in, we need to identify our subject. So who is our subject here? Who are we talking about? They give us his name, Sebastian, right? Is Sebastian yo? Am I Sebastian? No. Uh, are you Sebastian? No, we're not using tú, right? We're talking about someone else that's named Sebastian. So think of like first, you, second, and then él, ella, usted in the third person, right? It's a third person in the circle. And so we're talking about Sebastian. I don't know who Sebastian is, right? But we're talking about him, él, right? We're talking about él. So él ve videos en línea, okay? So that's what we're going to do for the rest of these um Activities here, let me see. Hopefully you are on page 55. Um, we're supposed to do this in class where you um, share your favorite activity and you place it under its correct category, whether it's an AR, ER, or an IR verb. Um, you can do this on your own in your notebooks. You can just write the different categories of the three different verbs that we have that end in AR, ER, and IR. You can look at your 
vocabulary packet, but you can also find it on your textbooks, which is page 74, I believe. Yeah, 74. You have las actividades favoritas. And so you're going to see a list there of different activities. Most of the activities, again, are in, end in AR. And so that is what we're going to focus on today. And a couple of verbs that, in, that are irregular. And so these are the AR endings, right? So we just saw the ER endings, but we'll cover ER and IR endings in chapter three because they're really similar. What I want you to focus on today, um, and knowing this for the end, of, like for the end of the week, and uh, chapter two are these endings, right? So o as a damos ais an. So the ar endings in the present tense. This is what we we take away the ar, and depending on who we're talking about, who our subject is, we're gonna plug in that o. Now, if it's talking about yo, if it's talking about tu, right? It's usually gonna tell you like in a parenthesis, right? If we're talking about el, ella, o usted, they're either gonna give us a name of someone, right? Um, or they're gonna give us the subject pronouns, which is el, ella, o usted, right? And so if you see a name or el, ella, o usted, then you know that this is how we're gonna conjugate it. If you see Sebastián y yo, that's, that usually means nosotros because that's including you. You're like myself, right? That's including me, yo. And so that's going to be nosotros o nosotras. And I'll give you an example. Uh, vosotros, vosotras, again, you're not going to get tested on this, but it's just good to know. Um, ellos, ellas, ustedes. So Sebastián y Camila, right? Sebastián y Camila. Ellos, right? It doesn't include yo, or it doesn't include tú. It's just ellos, ellas, o ustedes, right? And so there's a, a, a song that I'll link to this lecture where you sing the endings of the AR uh, verbs, okay? Entonces, let's go to page 55 in tu libro. Oops, let me just go back here. And get out. Pase ir a tu libro. If not, you can just follow along with me. Um, let's go back to yours. McGraw Hill. <clears throat> and the e text or the v text. What do they call it? A book. <laughs> You're calling it an e text. Okay. Esto es lo que vas a ver en la página 55. ¿Ve? Miras aquí, 55. Entonces, la primera ya la hicimos. We already saw that one, right? So all of these are going to have someone likes this. Or so-and-so likes this, right? Le, les gusta, les gusta. And so what I want you to do um, is you're going to change. You're going to get, uh, get rid of that le gusta. Right, a and le gusta or a les gusta. We're gonna take, we're gonna get rid of that. Um, so instead of saying she, he likes to do this, we're just gonna say he does this. This is what he does, right? So Sebastián le gusta ver videos en línea, and we took away the a and le gusta, and we are left with Sebastián ve videos en línea, right? A los estudiantes les gusta salir a bailar. This one, we're going to change a little bit. We're going to take, uh, we're going to get rid of that salir because salir is an irregular, which I'm going to cover after we do this activity. And so for the second one, you're only going to have a los estudiantes les gusta bailar. Okay. So a los estudiantes les gusta bailar and you're going to get rid of that they like to do this. And you're going to change it to they do this, they dance, right? So we're not saying the students like to dance. We're going to say the students dance, okay? A Omar y su amigo les gusta jugar fútbol. Now, this is another irregular one, okay? Um, because jugar, we add an ed to the stem, and I'll just show you that one. So we're, all you're doing is number two, uh, four, número cuatro, right? Uno, dos, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete y ocho. 
So uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. So six of them. And we'll do them together here. That way we are not confused. And so hopefully you have the endings for AR. You guys remember them? Hopefully you did take notes. If not, let me just write them. Endings. So for the yo, the ending will be o. For the do, the ending will be a s. For el, ella, usted. The ending would be a. Para nosotros. The ending is amos. The ending is nice. Para ellos, ellas, ustedes. The ending will be for other. And so let's get to work with the first one. You're going to have a los estudiantes. Los estudiantes les gusta bailar. A los estudiantes les gusta bailar. Okay. So we're trying to change this one. We're trying to say, we want to try to say a los estudiantes les gusta, right? So we're going to delete those. So remember when we're using the verb gustar, we need the a in front to say what's placing, placing to who, right? And les gusta. We're going to delete that. So now we're left with los estudiantes bailar, right? But we need to change this one because this is an, an infinitive. But since we're not using gustar anymore, we need to conjugate the verb. We need to change it. We need to plug it in, okay? So we're going to have los estudiantes, a subject. Los estudiantes. And so now we identify who are we talking about? Is it yo? Is it tú? Is it él, ella, usted? Right? It's not singular because we're talking about los estudiantes, the students. It's plural. It's not nosotros because it doesn't say los estudiantes y yo, right? That's not nosotros. This would be nosotros y yo. That's what I mean, or what I meant earlier. If it has y yo, that's nosotros, right? But this one is just los estudiantes, it's just the students. Now, vosotros, is it ellos, ellas, ustedes? Yeah, los estudiantes, ellos, right? The students, they, they dance. And so what's in the, the ending for ellos, ellas, ustedes? Uh, N. So we're going to write our stem, and our stem of the verb is by, right? Because we drop the AR. Remember, this is what we drop, right? We drop the AR. Se va, desaparece. And we add the new ending. The new ending would be. And bailan, right? Los estudiantes bailan. So now we changed it from the students like to dance to the students dance. And this is what they want you to do in that assignment that I closed last week, right? That 6B2. They want you to change uh, the, they want you to conjugate the verbs. And so you first need to identify who is it that's doing the action, right? Um, who, who is it? Is it, is it yo? Is it tú? El, e, usted, right? Who is it? In this case, it's los estudiantes. It's los estudiantes, it's plural. So we know it's not going to be in the singular side. It has to be on the plural side. It doesn't have y yo, so we can call that nosotros. Vosotros, we're not going to use it. And so it has to be ellos, ellas, o ustedes. We look at the ending. We take away the ending, the AR, and we plug in the new one. Right? Los estudiantes bailan. Now the next one, you have a Camila. A Camila. Le gusta mucho textear sus amigos. My son just put the volume up on his TV. Just give me a second. I 
think I stopped. Okay. Okay. Entonces, ¿dónde estábamos? Estamos en el whiteboard. Okay. So a Camila le gusta mucho textear a sus amigos. Now this one is going to be a little bit, um, the order is going to change a little bit just because we have mucho and mucho compliments le gusta. And so again, we're going to delete a, uh, right? Because we want to change to say she likes to text her friends a lot, right? Le gusta. And so our new way to write it, to say that she texts, right? She not only likes to text them, but she, she does. She texts her friends a lot. Camila textea, oh, I gave you the answer, but Camila, we're talking about Camila, right? We're not talking about yo, we're not talking about tu. Our verb is textear, to text, right? It's an AR ending, do you see that here? AR. So we drop that AR, and who are we talking about? We're talking about Camila, it's only one person. It's not yo, it's not tu, it's ella, right? So what's our new ending? Ah. So that's why I had textea, right? Mucho a sus amigos, right? So mucho complimented le gusta, right? That she likes this a lot. But now it has to uh, follow the verb textear, right? Textea mucho a sus amigos to say that she likes to, or well, that she texts a lot instead of that she likes to text a lot. Um, and so that's why we don't say Camila mucho textea a sus amigos, right? Now we have to put we have to put the verb first, okay? So Camila textea mucho a sus amigos. The next one we have is Anayeli le gusta montar a caballo. So try this one by yourself. You can pause this video. Um, the lecture and come back when you are ready and then we'll see if you got it right so remember you have to take away uh, a and le gusta because we're not using the verb gusta right now we want to say that she does this right now that she likes it she like uh, she does this so pause the lecture and come back when you're ready okay we were back, hopefully you did it. Um, pero esa es la respuesta, ¿no? We, oh, we dropped a Nayeli. So Nayeli, because we're talking about Nayeli, right? Again, if I give you a name, we know that's going to be in the third person. So él, ella, o usted. Um, montar is our verb. Montar means to ride a horse, right? Montar is to ride. So it's an AR verb, a -L. Okay, cool. We're going to use this, these endings, right? So again, who are we talking about? Nayeli, ella. A new ending is going to be a. So Nayeli monta a caballo. So that would be our new phrase, our new sentence. That she rides horses, right? Instead of she likes, she rides horses. Uh, la siguiente, you can try uh you could try it out as well. So if you didn't get that one, uh, try out the other one, which is uh, Eloy. Le gusta andar en patineta. Eloy. Try this one. Okay, so remember. So pause it and come back when you're ready. If you're back, that means you are ready uh, to continue with our assignment here. Entonces, what am I deleting? ¿Qué es lo que voy a eliminar? Ah, we don't need that anymore. Y no necesitamos le gusta, right? So we're left with Eloy. That is our subject. And that is our verb. Of nuestro verbo, it's an AR verb, en patineta. And this is just the activity, right? Entonces, if you have, si tienes Eloy, anda en patineta, muy bien. 
Well, why is it anda? Why? Because we're talking about Eloy. And we're talking about El. Again, you have to identify who your subject is. That way you know which ending you're plugging in. So dropping the AR, that's not the hard part. It's just knowing what it is that we're going to plug in, right? Knowing who the sentence is talking about. It's Eloy. Okay. Y tenemos dos más. We have two more. Let me just erase a couple, please. I'm going to have to do this. Um, tenemos dos más. Okay. La siguiente es a Juan Fernando. And you can do this one again while I write it. Try to finish it. A Juan Fernando. Levantar. Just to lift. Pesas. Lift weights. And... El gimnasio. What does that usually happen? Lifting weights. En el gimnasio, en el gym. ¿Vale? Entonces. ¿Qué vamos a eliminar? What is it that we're eliminating? Okay. We're eliminating a y eliminating le gusta. Y fuera. ¿Sí? We're left with Juan Fernando. This is our... Subject, right? This is who we're talking about. Levantar, to lift, is our verb. Is it an AR, ER, or an IR verb? It's an AR verb. Pesas en el gimnasio, right? Um, so we're going to have Juan Fernando, right? Again, identifying who he is. Which one? Is it yo? Is it in parentheses? Does it tell you in parentheses yo? No. Does it tell you in parentheses tú? No. It's giving us a name. Remember? Yo, tú, in parentheses. Or if they tell us a name, it's in the third person. So a third person in a little circle. La tercera persona. So él, ella, o usted. Okay. So our ending would be A. Ah. So Juan Fernando levanta pesas en el gimnasio, right? Juan Fernando levanta pesas en el gimnasio. Now, if I wanted to say something like this, uh, Juan Fernando y, oops, uh, Juan Fernando y uh, su amigo les gusta Levantar pesas en el gimnasio. For example, this is just an extra practice for you. Okay? Right? Well, we're not using le gusta anymore. So, a, this a, en les gusta, they're goners. See? ¿Sí? Los eliminamos. But now we have Juan Fernando y su amigo. ¿Sí? Juan Fernando y su amigo. So not only do we have one name, we have two people now. Okay, not only, not just Juan Fernando, anymore. we have two. We have Juan, Juan Fernando and his friend, su amigo. So we have two. So now we're not going to look at the singular. See? ¿Sí? Singular subject pronouns. We're going to look at the plural again. Is it nosotros? Does it say Juan Fernando y yo? No. Juan Fernando y su amigo. Ellos, right? They. So the new ending would be an. So the new one should say Juan Fernando y su amigo. Our um, stem. So what's our new ending? A N. Levantan pesas en el gimnasio. Right? Levantan. Right here. Levantan pesas. They lift weights. Add. Okay. So pesas en el gimnasio, that one stays the same. 
we're looking for is to get rid of a. A su amigo les gusta, right? Uh, and then we change the verb. In your assignment 6B2, it's going to tell you a name. If it's yo, they want you to conjugate it with, in the yo form. Then again, it's going to tell you in parentheses. If they want you to conjugate it in the form of tu, again, it usually tells you in parentheses. And so that's how you can identify when you're using yo, when you're using tu, when you're using el, ella, usted, is with the name or with the subject pronoun. Um, nosotros, right? If you're using nosotros, let's do the next one, and I'll give you an example. Juan Fernando y yo. Right? Let's say Juan Fernando y yo live wait at the gym. So if it says a name, but it has y yo, that means it's in the nosotros. So if I want to use the same example, the same verb, levantar, which is an AR ending, what's the new ending, right? We have, we write our stem, levant, right? What's the ending for nosotros, right? Because that's nosotros, y yo, that includes me. So nosotros, the new ending would be amos. Levantamos pesas. In el gimnasio. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. If you're not, uh, let me know on Thursday and we can go over this again. Y ahí, por último, tenemos la última, el último ejemplo que es a Sebastián, otra vez Sebastián. A Sebastián le gusta comer en restaurantes restaurante con su compañero Daniel. Okay. A Sebastián, again, what are we deleting? ¿Qué vamos a eliminar? Le gusta comer en, su, en restaurantes con su compañero Daniel. Now here, this one can be confusing because you have con su compañero, right? But this one is saying that he likes to have, uh, that he likes to eat at restaurants with his uh, compañero, classmate, or uh, compañero de trabajo, Daniel, okay? But we're still talking Sebastián, right? And that kind of gives us a hint. Sebastián, ¿qué? Again, it's only in the third person because they're just saying that he does this with this person. Sebastián. Now, comer, it's an ER verb. Um, so I'll give you that one. Sebastián come en restaurantes con su compañero. And then another way that we know that it's not they, well, we're not using the um, they con uh, ending, is because it's not saying a Sebastián y a Daniel, right? It's just saying Sebastián eats with his uh, with his friend Daniel, con su compañero Daniel, en restaurantes, right? So it's not saying, it doesn't have that y su amigo, y Daniel, right? It's just saying Sebastián eats. So Sebastián come en restaurantes con su compañero Daniel. And so I believe that all of the um, questions that you're going to see on that assignment, the 6B, 6B2, um, they're going to be mostly in the AR with the AR endings. And so um, hopefully you took notes on that. If not, you have, you can go to chapter three. Um, again, this is just kind of like an intro. Uh, for the AR verbs, but you can go to chapter three, Fatinas. Fatinas. Fatina 103, 103. That gives you the verb hablar, which is to uh, speak, and it is an AR verb. Um, you can. Um, you can look at the AR endings there. 
um, and complete that homework. You also have an, on the next page, one of four, the ER and IR endings. Again, this one, we're not gonna focus a lot until chapter three, chapter four. Um, what, I, what we want you to get down is the AR endings first. But again, you have these three different categories. We know that there's three different types of verbs, AR, ER, and IR verbs, okay? So make this list um, with your favorite activities. And when you think about them, like let's say you like to correr, like to run, correr would be under ER because correr ends in ER. Okay, so just make sure that you're able to identify uh, the where they go, what type of verbs they are. And now we have this. Okay, so then we have the irregular verbs. Okay, so irregular verbs, they either have a change, we add a letter, and that could only be like on the yo, on the yo form, or it just changes completely. And so even one slightly change um, that doesn't follow strictly the pattern of o, as, a, amos, an, um, the endings for ARs or ERs or IRs, then they are considered irregular, okay? So who got, again, I'm gonna do this and hopefully this is the last thing. Um, AR drawings, okay. So, tenemos jugar, tenemos hacer, tenemos ir, dar y salir. Okay. So, I'm just going to list the way we conjugate them, right? And it's just going to be a list. So, I'm not going to do Okay. So these are our irregular verbs. Oops, let me just entonces. Oops. The way we conjugate these verbs, and I'm just gonna conjugate them. <laughs> so jugar, it's irregular because even though it still ends with an O, right? Just like our AR endings do. We add that A. Do you guys see that A right here? Juego is not jugo, right? Jugo is juice, by the way. <laughs> um, but we add juego to say that we play, right? Juego fútbol. Yo juego fútbol. I play uh, soccer. Tú juegas. Tú juegas voleibol. Play volleyball. Sí. El juega fútbol americano, football. Sí. Um, el, ella, again, juega, that's for el, ella, usted. Um, nosotros jugamos, ellos juegan. Okay. And so we have yo juego, and I do, if we look at the endings, o, as, a, amos, an. Yeah. They do end, but we add the E, except for nosotros. Notice how nosotros, we don't have an E right here. We don't say juegamos, no, it's jugamos, okay? But then that's the only one. That one in vosotros, we don't add the E. But for the rest of one, yes, it's juega. So if you wanna like, if you wanna say that you play a sport, you can use the verb jugar um, or practicar to practice, right? However, when you wanna say, if you play an instrument, we want to say, I play the piano, I play the guitar, right? We don't use jugar. Jugar is to play a sport or just to like free play, you know, like los niños juegan, like the kids are playing. Um, but when we are strictly saying that we play an instrument, we use the verb tocar, which is interesting because tocar means to touch. So you're essentially saying, I touch the guitar. Um, however, we use tocar to mean that I play the guitar, I play the piano, I play the saxophone, etc. Okay, so again, when you're talking about playing an instrument, we do not use jugar, we use tocar. Okay, yo toco la guitarra, tú tocas el piano, él toca 
el saxofono. Él toca la marimba. Ella toca, uh, eh, no sé, la marimba. Okay? Nosotros tocamos el violín. Okay? So we don't use the verb, the verb jugar to play instruments. Okay? Now, hacer, right? Hacer changes in the first form, the first person. So to hacer, you have, you have that on your list too. The last one, page number four real quick. Hacer, here you have hacer, to do or to me, and then the activity, hacer Snapchat. So if you guys have Snapchat, you can say, me gusta hacer Snapchat, or yo, right? If you want to say that you do it, yo hago Snapchat, okay? Um, tú haces Snapchat. Él, ella, usted hace Snapchat. Nosotros hacemos Snapchat, ¿sí? No, ellos, ellas, ustedes hacen Snapchat. So if you notice that first yo in the yo form, right? We don't have a C anymore, we have a G. So even though the other ones do follow the endings of an ER verb, um, that G just makes it irregular. And so yo hago, tú haces, él hace, nosotros hacemos, ellos, ellas, ustedes hacen. Now the verb ir, the verb ir, it's only like two letters. But this verb means to go. So if you look at ir al cine, right? To go to the movies, to go to the theater. Ir de vacaciones, to go on vacation. Ir uh, de compras, to go shopping, right? We can say, me gusta ir de compras. I like to go shopping. But if I want to say, I go shopping, right? Yo voy de compras. See, this one completely changes. It doesn't look like ir, right? Tú vas de compras él ella usted va right um, nosotros vamos de compras ellos ustedes ellos ellas ustedes van okay so if you notice it kind of follows the ar endings except for the yo again voy right we have that y there but then the rest of it is vas right as, a, amos, an. Those are the endings for AI verbs. And so, ir, yes, it's completely irregular because it doesn't look like ir when we conjugate it, right? When we plug it in, we don't drop the it. I mean, we drop the, the IR, but then we add complete, like a new complete e word for it. And so, this one is, yeah. Um, dar, AI verb. That you have it on page. Dar, ¿dónde está dar? Dar, dar, dar. Oh, in la página 74. You have it right there on the first page, 74. Dar and to go for a walk. So dar un paseo. Right? To go for a walk, to go kind of like, you know, but salir is to go out. But that is more like, oh, I'm going for a stroll. Oh, dar un paseo, right? Um, that also means to give. So it just depends on the context that you're using it. Um, that you're gonna, but it's uh, it means different things, I guess, and depending on the context you're using it. But the conjugation is still the same. Okay, so doy un paseo, right? For a walk, I go for a stroll. Doy, so yo doy, tú das, él da, ella da, ustedes da. I mean, los, usted. I know this one's not ustedes, guys. Sorry. Is usted okay? Part of my mistake there. I can't change that. Um, nosotros damos y ellos, ellas, ustedes dan. Okay. Again, kind of like ir, right? O it ends in o uh, y, but then the rest are follow the ar endings. Salir. This one. Salir, you have it on page 25. Y salir a bailar, like to go out dancing. Salir a correr, to go out running, right? Just to go out, salir. 
this one, we add a GL. Yosalgo. Only on the on the yo form, because then it goes back to yes, right? Um, tú sales, él, ella, usted sale. Nosotros salimos. Y ellos, ellas, ustedes salen. Okay, so it's irregular uh, because of that G, right? Kind of like this one. That G, algo, salgo. Um, if you notice, hacer and salir, right? These are our other verbs, ER. This is an IR verb. If you notice, they're pretty similar. And so that's what we usually, when we go over them, we learn about these verbs, ER and IR. They're always together because they have the same endings, right? So, I mean, don't pay attention to the first one. The first one still ends in O. Um, but this one's are regular because of the G. Anyway, the rest one, the, the, the rest of them, the endings are E S, A, right? E S, E, uh, E M, O S, E N. Salir, the same thing. E S, E, um, and then E N. The only way you can identify whether it's an E R or an I R is when you look at the nosotros. The nosotros for E R verbs are gonna end, are gonna end in hemos. Right? Hemos. For IR, the nosotros is going to end in emos. Okay? But the rest, they're basically the same endings. Okay? So these are the irregular verbs that you probably see on the that assignment that you're going to work on, 6B2. And so just make sure that you either, you either have this written down, you can go back to this lecture and do it, take a picture, um, because I'm pretty sure it's going to come up on your, um, wait, on that assignment. Okay. And so that is with the irregulars. Don't worry. We have more irregular verbs later. Um, and so this is what you were supposed to do with el compañero in class at the end of class. Que haces todos los días. So give me two examples of things that you do every day. Remember todos los días, every day, two things. So have that written down in your notebook, because I'm going to ask you these questions on Thursday. ¿Qué haces todos los días? Dame dos ejemplos. ¿Y qué haces los fines de semana? Cuatro ejemplos. Now, we're not writing what you like to do every day. You're not writing what you like to do on the weekends. Okay? You're writing what you do. So remember how we did that activity on page 55. We're not using a mí me gusta anymore. Now you're saying yo corro. Right? Yo bailo con mis amigas, right? So you're going to figure out, so use the AR verbs for these examples because you have the AR endings. And so tell me what is it that you do every day and what is it that you do on the weekends, okay? Dos ejemplos para todos los días, cuatro ejemplos para los fines de semana. Okay, chicos, hopefully this was enough of, and it wasn't that long. Um, I think it was. <laughs> anyway, um, I hopefully I'll see you on Thursday and we can get started on our new topic. If you have questions on this, please let me know. Office hours, I am most likely gonna just have it based on if you make an appointment with me. So send me a message if you wanna meet with me. That way I can um, prepare myself. And yeah, uh, other than that, I'm not gonna be in my office, so. If you want to talk to me, just send me an inbox. Okay, chicos, hasta luego. Nos vemos el jueves. Bye. Oh, adiós.